A quick link in the description to our sponsor, SpeedCubeShop.com, where you can buy all of your cubing needs. Use code OMEN for a discount. Let's go, boys. We did it. Now, these were my results for the KS Air Capital Cubing 2024 competition. This competition was in Andover, Kansas, and huge thanks to the delegates for making it possible. So I competed in 303, obviously, and Mega Minx. Now, I did make it to the final rounds in these events, so make sure and stick around till the end to see how I did. What's up, guys? This is solve number one in Mega Minx round one. So this is just like a warm-up solve getting a feel for the competition. And it was pretty funny because it's super hot outside right now. Uh, and I'm wearing a hoodie, and it's because they have it pretty cold in the venue. Um, so nothing too crazy with this solve. The cross was kind of tough for me, and yeah, now on to S2L at kind of a late time. And you can see there I'm having a hard time turning. Trying to find my last few pairs for S2L, then on to last layer. And again, my hands were super sticky for some reason and cold, so it was really hard to turn fast and accurate. There we got a 59, kind of laughing it off. So on to solve number two in this Mega Minx average. Uh, fingers feeling about the same. I was trying my best to try to keep them warm before every solve, but it was tough. So I remember during this entire round, I was having a really hard time finding my F2L pieces. So that was a constant struggle. My S2L was a little bit better, but the problem with S2L is I really just need to make sure my hands are warm so I can turn fast. And my hands were too cold to turn fast, so decent last layer. Didn't know the PLL, and... And that was a 57.7, so not very good, but not terrible. On to solve number three. Uh, I think I remember this cross being, or this star being kind of easy, so that definitely helped me out. And I was able to find my first couple of F2L pairs fairly fast. Getting a little more comfortable with solving in the competition, so it's always a good thing. My main goal for this competition in Megaminx was to PR at least. Uh, and I'm currently learning PLL, so there's a lot of changes going on with my last layer that I'm still getting used to. So I wasn't expecting the best of the best results. And here, didn't know the PLL, so I did EP. And I have a hard time recognizing that H perm. But it was still a 52, my first decent solve of the competition. So this is my fourth solve, and it's a little hard to see this one. It was hard to get a good angle, so... I'll just cut short and summarize this solve. Uh, my F2L and S2L was a lot smoother, but still shaky turning. And uh, this solve ended up being a 51, which is a good time, but I had a mess up on the timer stop where I did an A perm and dropped the cube with a missed turn, but I didn't stop the timer, so I quickly fixed that turn. He's cheating! And now for my last solve of the Mega Minx round one average. At this point, I'm just trying to salvage this average to not get a totally garbage average. But at the end of the day, it really wasn't terrible. So still trying to find my pieces here. I have kind of a hard time. I, I messed up inserting a couple of the first pairs of S2L, so I had to fix them, unfortunately. As you can see, I kind of shake my head there. And this one, I, I remember this last layer could have been a lot better, but uh, it, it was okay. So I end up doing that K perm, and my average ends up being a 55.18. So not very good for me, but at least it puts me in first in this round one, so can't complain about that. Now that Mega Minx round one is over, the focus shifted to 303 round one, and I, I remember being really jittery for this because I did a lot of prep um, as you can see, I made a, a video of how I was practicing for this competition. So I was really curious how my results were going to be after doing this type of training. Now heads up, the scrambles in this next round were actually like really good. I saw first pair in almost every single scramble, and it's not common for me to see my first pair every single time. So stay tuned. So here we are. We have a pretty good cross, like I said, and... My turning was very fast and accurate, and my cube setup definitely helps a lot with this. And a judge, 
kind of got a little bit in the way there. Finished off with a V perm and a 10.9. So solve number two. This one is not as focused, but hopefully you can get the gist of it a little bit. Um, so yeah, I get another speedy solve and a really good last layer to finish off. So this 8.8 .8 was PR. My PR before was 8.9. So to PR my second solve of this competition was super hype. Starting solve number three, just trying to calm myself down after getting a PR single. And this scramble was pretty good as well. I saw all my F2L pieces for the most part. WOLL and JPERM, I think. And I get another sub 10 here. At this point, I'm kind of in disbelief. So we start this solve, and I find my first couple of pairs pretty well, but the last two are kind of a struggle. And. Here, I, I definitely mess up PLL big time and get a 13, but can't be too mad. I just got two really solid solves. So lastly, my final solve of this first round of 3 3 I really had to focus and lock in because this average could go either way, depending on this uh, final solve. So starting a little slow, but then I zoomed through these last few pairs, and it almost looks like I know Rue, but... <laughs> I basically do M moves for that OLO, and then I got U perm, so it was just straight M and U moves for a 9.6. And uh, that gave me a PR average of 10.16 and a PR single with an 8.81. So very, very solid. So after a solid performance in 303 round one, we are now starting Mega Minx finals. Um, so yeah, my fingers were definitely more warm right now. Uh, so my turning was better. Uh, I was a little worried though because I was doing... I probably solved Mega Minx for like 30 minutes prior to this round. And my times were just not very good. Um, so I didn't think my times were going to translate very well on the front stage today. But um, I saw my colors a bit better in this lighting, so that's good news. So I finished up those last few pairs, pausing a little bit, but getting a nice uh, soon OLO. And I definitely big time mess up the last layer here. Um, I don't really know what I was trying to do there. But then I finished off to get 103. Not a good start, not how you want to start this final round. So at this point, I put myself in a really bad situation. Um, starting off with a 103 in this final. So I try to lock in as much as I could and not really think about that bad solve and just move on and solve the best I possibly can. So I remember these F2O cases I was getting to be like not very good. Pieces were really far away from each other. Um, and it, it they could have been good for other people, but I guess the order that I was solving them in was just not optimal. Uh, but the good news is is that I am seeing my pieces a lot easier, a lot better here than round one. I get another soon OLO, which is nice. Don't know the PLO, and I think I get E perm there for a 53. So getting that 53 kind of lifted my spirits up a little bit, but I still had to lock in. Definitely don't want to count that 103. So. Again, kind of the same story as the saw previously. The F2L pieces are just really far away from each other, but I try and make do with what I can. The bright side whenever pieces are like that is whenever you rotate, you end up seeing more pieces around the puzzle. So you can look ahead to that stuff later on. Pretty good start to the S2L here. Uh, my turning is definitely a lot smoother than round one. Very good ending and transition from S2L to last layer. I thought I knew that PLL, but I didn't, so I had to like double take everything. And I get a 51. That 51 fell a lot worse than what it actually was. Next is solve number four and Mega Mix Finals. Feeling a little bit better. Definitely a little more warmed up. So the F2L here was a little nicer to me, but I think my last two F2L pairs were kind of bad. I just chose I just chose poor solution choices for those. 
S2L pretty much stayed consistent throughout this average. Um, I think this one I started off a little slower, just rotating, rotating a lot for not very many pairs, but definitely a faster ending there. And that was a one look Olo. And I think this is a K perm based off of my execution, but I definitely knew. I definitely felt like that could have been a sub 50 easily. So last solve, I knew this was going to be my last solve of the entire competition on Mega Minx. So looking at my average, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to try and send it. And before I even started the solve, I was really hoping for just a good F2L, F2L cases. And that's what I got. All of my F2L pieces were there. Pretty sure I completed that in like 17 or 16 seconds. Onto S2L, zooming through this. This is a really good solve for me. When I, whenever I start turning around the cube at around 30 like that, it's a good solve. Get really good cases here, easy OLL, and then this is just an A perm, so I one look PLL for a 44. This was an amazing solve. Now, I still can't believe I got a 44 on Mega Minx in this competition, because at home, I typically get like two or three 44s uh, a day, which is not very many because I practice a lot on Mega Minx. So to get one in competition was a huge W. Yeah, definitely unexpected, especially when you look at how my average started. So we'll take that. So this is my first solve in 3 or 3 second round. And this cross is decent. There are a lot of different ways I could have solved it. Uh, so prior to this round, I was solving really good, uh, warming up. And this was an OLL skip and a very solid solve, 8.58, which is another PR single for me. So uh, as you can see here, this was a really goofy solve. My judge was making me laugh, cracking up. And um, yeah, I wasn't even thinking about the competition right now. Cross is decent and I just like somehow spammed through the cross to first pair. Uh, and just a really nice last layer there, and somehow got 9.04. And can I like stay in my chair for one solve? Jeez, bro. I am super nervous because I'm like, this is just, I started out way too fast. Like two bangers like that is crazy. So I struggle a lot there. I, I get a really bad last layer case with an E-perm. Um, but yeah, my F2 was just really bad there. So I try to bounce back after that 13 second solve and well, you'll see what happens. So I pause a lot throughout that entire F2L. I mess up the OLL and then I mess that up and I get a 13, which yeah, at that point I'm just like, this average is over. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that solve definitely could have been a 9. Stop the cap! <laughs> Alright, final solve of this round, and I'm just gonna try to send it here, so I'm spamming TPS as much as I can, which causes me to not find pieces as much. I get Colin Burns Olo into E-Perm again, and you can see I'm just like, wow, really? That's, that's what happened to me? Now, even though... I had two 13s, this average was still 11.04, which means having that counting 904 did this average so good. Like if I just got low 10s the rest of this average, it would have been sub 10. But nope, still don't have that sub 10 average yet. Now I am about to start 3 out 3 finals. And at this point in the competition, I am just thrilled and happy with all my results I have gotten so far. So no matter what I get in these finals, I'm not going to be upset. And I'm just going to do my best and have fun. So here we are. I somehow find a really nice, uh, efficient solution in this solve, as you can see. And pretty nice OLL into a really nice PLL. And I get another sub 9. I don't know why I kept on getting sub 9s in the first solve of the average. Like, that's so funny. So after that hype solve again, I am just like, I, I can't believe it. So I try to focus on these solves. And fast start for this. 
kind of a lot of rotations for the F2 pairs at the end there. I get another GC perm unfortunately, but I'm happy with the execution. So this cross was a little hard for me to inspect, and I don't think I was able to find my first pair very easily, but everything was just right in front of my face. And I get an end perm here, and I'm really happy with a 10.3 having an end perm. So at this point I'm just trying to keep cool. Um, solve number four is pretty huge for this average, so I try to find something good. I lock up on those second, second and third pair. Yeah, I think I messed up Olo there, but end up getting a U perm. So, um, yeah, I had I definitely have mixed feelings about that solve. So this one's a little bit hard to see. Hopefully you guys can make out what's going on here. But I get a difficult finger trick cross. I It, it definitely could have been better. Pretty decent F2L. And I get a G perm with a 9.84. And I am just so happy with how I did in this, in all three of the three out of three rounds. This was a huge comp for me. So my results were pretty crazy. I had no idea what I was getting myself into doing this type of training. And if you're curious about this training that I keep on talking about, watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.